To sustain something means to try to keep it running as long as possible, forever, if you can. The key thing about sustainability is, is this balance. The balance between the replenishment and how fast you're taking things. And if that's out of balance, if you're taking things way too fast, then, then it's not going to be sustainable. So why is this such a big problem now? The answer is that we're a lot better at taking things from the earth than we ever were in the past. We're pumping more water, we're taking more fish, we're plowing more land, we're using more for cities than ever before in the history of the earth. Ecosystems can deliver more and they can sustain that delivery if you sustain their diversity and if you sustain their productivity and if you sustain their resilience. So those elements of how ecosystems work, diversity, productivity, resilience, are the keys to not taking more than the ecosystem can provide. They're the keys to making sustainability work in any particular ecosystem. How do those three elements apply to coral reefs and how are we trying to make those elements work to our advantage? How are we trying to use that knowledge to make sustainability of coral reef ecosystems real? Productivity is the growth rate of the parts of the ecosystem. How, how fast the corals grow, how fast the algae grow, how fast the, the fish grow and, and how fast they reproduce into the next generation, how many baby fish there are, how many, how many grow up into the next generation. And all of that growth is the fuel, as it were, for the ecosystem. Diversity, it turns out, is an important part of productivity as well. There's thousands of species on these reefs. There's thousands of species of fish, thousands of invertebrates, hundreds of coral species, and they play slightly different roles in the ecosystem using the energy of the ecosystem in slightly different ways. And so the more species there are, the higher the productivity can be. The third thing is resilience. That's the ability of an ecosystem to bounce back after it's disturbed. And, and as you might imagine, that has a lot to do with productivity and diversity. The more diversity and productivity, the easier it is for the system to regrow after it's disturbed. There's plenty of disturbances in ecosystems naturally. People add to that level of disturbance, and so if the system is not going to degrade and run downhill, it has to be able to regrow after natural and human-made disturbances. What we want to do is understand how we're affecting them, what we're taking, and the capacity of the system to replenish itself in order to make sure that some parts are left in balance. The alternative is to just convert everything into machinery. After all, ecosystems are going to produce stuff for us, but we can produce that with technology. Technology will be our answer. Uh, well, but we don't really know how to grow coral reefs and coral reefs fish with technology. Maybe you don't need that. We don't know how to grow oxygen with t technology, at least at the scale that these oceans do, or these forests. We don't know how to recycle water. We don't know how to protect the shoreline as cheaply and efficiently as natural ecosystems do. So the alternative really doesn't exist. We cannot use technology to recreate all the things we get out of ecosystems. Right now, the machinery of the ecosystems themselves is the best, the most efficient, the most widespread machinery on the planet. It's what we need, it's what we use, it's what we've got to continue.